guys, I'm Eileen. Welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk to you guys about my experience of selling my luxury handbags and where did I sell these bags. Now before I start, I just want to mention that quite a number of people ask me what I wear in my videos. So I usually leave all the links down below in the description box. So if you are interested, do have a look. First of all, I don't see luxury handbags as investment. I'm not a collector or a reseller. I mainly buy bags to enjoy and use. I do look after my bags, but I will not buy them to keep them in a box, hoping that I can sell them in the future for a profit. Having said that, most handbags do go up in price over the years. For example, Chanel can have two major price increases just within one year. So it's quite reasonable to say that if you sell the bag yourself, you are quite likely to make some profit. However, I think this will only apply if you do keep the bag in a pristine condition. And if you can't sell the bag yourself, you will very much have to pay for a consignment service and that usually will charge you about 30% commission rate. So that really will take away all your profit. Now some other bags like the Hermes Constance, Kelly and Birkin are very sought after so the resale value can be very high. Sometimes it can even be three times the price of what you pay in the store. However, because the supply is so limited, you do often have to have a purchase history before you get offered the Birkin or the Kelly. So you do have to factor in these expenses when you sell the bag. So basically, I will not buy a bag with the hope that I can sell it for a profit in the future, but I do hope to get a decent amount of money back. I have actually made some profits selling some handbags in the past, but it wasn't really much if you compare it to how much I lost selling other bags. I certainly suggest to keep all the proof of purchase and receipts. I know a lot of us do that anyway for insurance purposes, but I also think it's a good idea to keep the full packaging. Not only will it help to keep the value for the item, it will also make the purchase a lot more pleasant for the new owner. So I usually try to keep everything, including the box, the paper bag, ribbons and care cards. I know if you're buying a handbag abroad, it can be a bit tricky for you to try to keep everything and bring it back home. So I usually try to hand carry the bag and I'll pack my clothing in the box and then leave the box in the check-in luggage. I know a lot of people ship their boxes to wherever they are traveling to as well, so that might be a good option. Now, although I don't think you should buy a bag purely because of the resale value, it is a factor that I consider when buying a luxury handbag now especially after selling quite a number of bags and losing quite a bit of money. Now, from my experience, Louis Vuitton and Chanel tend to keep their prices very well, especially with their classic collection. So for example, the Chanel classic double flaps or the mini flaps tend to be very popular, so you should be able to get quite a decent offer. And for Louis Vuitton, it would be their Neverfull and the Speedy. So I haven't actually sold any Hermes bags myself, but from what I can see on different websites, their Constance, Kelly and Birkin tend to have very high resale value. In fact, even the Lindy's in very popular colour like Etop or Black can be very sought after as well. Meanwhile, other bags like Belit and Two Box tend not to do as well. The resale value for other brands like Dior and Celine tend to be quite poor. I have actually sold a Dior bag and a Celine Nano as well and on both occasions, I actually lost about half the money of what I paid for. And these bags were in pristine condition. So now, I will certainly think twice if I'm interested in any bags from these two brands. I will have to be quite sure before I buy the bag because if I do have to sell it in the future, I will need to be ready to lose quite a lot of money. There are quite a few options if you do want to sell your luxury handbags. So the first option would be sell it yourself. I did actually sell a Chanel bag on my Instagram previously. So basically, I contacted Tiffany and her Instagram page is called BT Channel. She posted the pictures of my Chanel bag on her page and she basically directed her audience to my page 
and immediately I started having quite a lot of inquiries. So I spent a lot of time answering questions and sending pictures. Eventually, the bag went to a lovely lady in California. Now the whole experience was okay, but it was quite scary for me because I was constantly worried about things like, what if the bag got damaged on the way there? What if it never got there? And because I've not met this lady before, what if it was all a scam? So I can totally see why reselling is a job of its own. Anyway, I know a lot of people are using PayPal now to buy and sell handbags. Unless if the buyer is paying you using the friends and family option, there usually will be a 3% service charge on PayPal. So you want to be very clear about who will be responsible for this charge. I will also suggest you to make a very clear invoice on PayPal. So for example, you want to state very clearly about the condition of the handbag and you might want to make a list of all the items that you will send with the bag as well. For example, when I sold my Chanel bag, I made a list of inventory. Basically, this included the things that I'll be sending with the bag. I basically listed out everything, including the box, the paper bag, and two camellia flowers, three ribbons, receipt, and care cards. And just to be extra careful, you might want to include other details like the measurement of the box and the paper bag. The key is you want to protect yourself and prevent any possible dispute in the future. You also want to be very clear about who will be paying for things like shipping, insurance, and tax, especially if you are sending your item abroad. Now, if for whatever reason, the buyer is not happy with the item and wants to have a refund, it will cost you shipping and insurance to have the bag returned to you because I don't think the buyer would be very happy to cover this cost for you. So again, protect yourself as much as possible. Now, if you are selling the bag yourself, the return is a lot better because you are cutting out the middleman. Now for Tiffany, she did charge me a 2% service charge which was quite minimal if you compare to what other consignment service will be charging you. But it's important to remember that it can be quite a lot of hassle and it can take you quite a lot of time. The second option is use a consignment service. So basically the way consignment works is you only get paid when the item is sold and usually they will charge a commission and it can be anything from 20 to 30% of the sale price. I actually sold two handbags on Vestia Collective before and it's basically a consignment website. So basically the way it works is you post the pictures of the item together with the suggested price that you would like for the item. It will then take Vestia Collective about one to two days to approve the item. And once it's approved, they will then post the pictures on the website for everyone to see. And when someone buys the item, you then ship the item to Vestia Collective in Paris free of charge. The experts will then authenticate the item and ship the bag to the buyer. The experience wasn't very pleasant for me as a seller. So the first bag I tried to sell on Vestia Collective was a Celine Nano. Now, as I mentioned before, I usually keep all the receipts for my luxury items now, but this was just the one bag that I couldn't find the receipt for. So when Vestia Collective got the bag, they said they couldn't authenticate the bag and that I could either have the bag shipped back to me, but I will have to pay 12 pounds for it, Another option would be leave it there for three months and it would dispose of the bag. It was frustrating for me, not because of the 12 pounds, but because I knew it was my fault that I misplaced the receipt. Eventually, I sold the bag to Designer Exchange, which I will talk about in a bit. I then sold a Dior bag on Vestia Collective. Now this time I had everything ready. So receipt and the full packaging, everything was there. However, when they received the bag, they told me that my measurement was wrong and the bag was actually half a centimeter shorter than I described. Vestia Collective then gave the buyer the option to pull out from the sale and eventually it took another four months for the bag to sell. So generally, it wasn't a very exciting experience for me, but I tried to look at the bright side of everything because it just shows me that they are doing everything they can to look after the customer's best interest. 
And if you are wondering, the commission rate is about 30% of the sale price. Another consignment service I use is NPN Handbags. Now basically, it's a website based in the UK and it's run by a lovely lady called Sheehan. It works very similar to Bastille Collective because you only get paid when the item is sold. I certainly prefer to use Sheehan to Bastille Collective because the service is just excellent. So if you do have a handbag to sell, Basically, you just take a few pictures of the item, send them to Shein, and she will give you a quote. And if you're happy with it, you can either ship the item to Shein or just drop it off. Shein will then take care of everything else and there's no hassle from your part. If you have a look at the website, you will see that her pictures are probably the best pictures you can find on any consignment website. And her descriptions are so thorough and accurate so you'll be very sure that you are getting what you see on the website. Personally, I have sold four bags with Xi'an and every transaction was hassle-free and pleasant. Her commission rate is quite a bit lower, which is 20% because she is a smaller and more personal company. Now, there's only one tiny disadvantage with her service because basically she will keep the bag until it's sold. So basically, you are parting with your bag and it can take quite a few months before the bag gets sold and you receive the payment. Whereas with Vestia Collective, you can pretty much cancel the sale at any point if you like. Also, Shein is very selective in what she sells on her website. She usually only takes handbags from major brands and they have to be in excellent condition. Vestia Collective is a lot more flexible in that sense because they do accept a lot more items from a lot more brands. Again, I think Shein's service is excellent. So usually, if I want to sell something, I'll ask Shein to see if she will take the item. And if she doesn't, I will then look at other options. The third option is sell it directly to a pre-loved luxury store. So I use Designer Exchange, which is based in the UK. They actually have five stores in the UK now. Now they work very similar to Fashion File, which is based in the US. So basically you just upload the pictures on the website and it will take them about two days to get back to you with a quote. And if you are happy, just post the item to them or you can drop it off in the store. Now really, this is the easiest and the quickest way to sell your items. But because you are paying for a service, the return will not be great. For example, I sold a Slee Nano and I got about £700 for it. And I also sold the Mulberry Lily in the small size and I got about £240 for it. They've also started taking shoes and clothing now. That is excellent news for me because I've actually sold a pair of tops and a dress from Helmut Lang to them as well. So basically, if you want to sell your handbag fast and you do not want to have any hassle, then sell it directly to a second-hand pre-love store. But if you can wait a bit longer and you're hoping to get a better price, then use a consignment service. Lastly, if you don't mind taking care of everything yourself, then sell the handbag yourself because that way you don't have to pay anyone any commission. So I hope this video can be like a reminder, especially if you're considering your next handbag purchase because selling is not fun and it's certainly not what I enjoy doing. I still believe in selling things that I don't use anymore, but from now on, I am buying things with the intention that I don't have to sell them in the future. So if you did enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing. I want to thank you so much for watching and have a good day.